Hi, hello everybody. My name is Marama. You can call me Mim for short and I'm here with the notorious Peter Andrews. Um, would you mind introducing yourself, PA, to the um, land management field day participants at the Erelion Station in the Northern Territory? Thank you, Marama. Well, my name is Peter Andrews. I think a lot of people know that. I've been involved in hoping that we get to recognise the brilliant ways this Australian landscape can offer all farm planned plant managing people. Yeah, great. And you grew up largely around Broken Hill and Gawler and Bylong. Um, tell me what you experienced there that created that deeper appreciation for agriculture, landscape, and ultimately for our climate. Well, when I was very young, the mines had burnt all the trees in the 1920s. So we're out on the plains with not a tree in sight. And then it got some really dry, hard weather and we had a really bad storm, three hours, and all of the vegetation that we had disappeared. And then, of course, we went through two years of drought. It's a mind-bending experience. And then, of course, we had the very wet period of the 60s. And then I moved to an estuarine area near Gawler and the Gawler River. And after another 15, 20 years, moved up to the catchment or watershed of the Hunter Valley in Bylong. And I was aware after that, that this landscape had contained processes that my education had never made me aware of. So I started working and then I realized it was the most brilliant series of water management, plant managed, energy managed, fertility health managed system that I had ever imagined could be available. And I thought it would be easy, just show them and the history will tell it and the parochial models will do it. And well, here I am 45 years later and I'm still tearing my hair out saying, stop the planet, I want to get off. Mm, yeah, it has been a wild adventure and roller coaster as you've led and pioneered so much of this industry. Um, in terms of that pioneering process, you developed a research project called the Natural Farming Sequence. Could you please explain why you called it this, um, the approach that you used and the science that it's based on? Well, clearly, um, agriculture had to have some sort of an impact because we've got to supply food and we've got to do things. And of course, the sequence part of it meant that Australia, because it's most uh, definitely very different from Europe and the reason being Europe has really seasonal things freezing and thawing we really have rain events and they can fall at any time and of course there is a small variation between seasons but fundamentally when it rains this sequence of what this Australian landscape offers happens and it had this amazing capacity to store water because we have the longest hours of sunlight and for that to work somehow there had to be a permanent supply of water and it was just brilliant it was underneath grass covered really big storage areas and i thought this is just too good to be true and surely it will take no time at all for everybody to realize but we have trundled along still promoting um European ideas and the thing is I hope in the natural sequence when we introduce changes to a landscape a sequence of processes happen and the issue is a lot of them were failures but in enough cases solutions so in this natural sequence if people could be advised how they work because they are varied in distance and time between them and it's very difficult for people to learn it all, but it is quite simple today with our technical ability to analyze the landscape and then advise people what they best do to get the best result at the least cost, which is the big thing we've got to understand that my biggest platform was this land worked automatically for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so, you know, because we're, we're chatting to the awesome crew in the Northern Territory at the moment, and obviously the landscape they have up there is quite different from potentially what's behind us. So what are some of the implementations that you have applied, especially in these types of range and dry land conditions? And what were the results of those applications? Well, it's a very, very complex question, that one, mm. <laughs> Marimara. I give me a bit of a break. Yes, so I just, there are things we call in our area crab holes, melon holes is what's Queensland's general name, and in Victoria they call them gill guys. They really were a periodic chain of ponds. And of course, we all knew that there were chain of ponds down all the rivers and across all the landscape, and it was. Um, quoted by Lotsky as a landscape not known to his knowledge anywhere else in the world. It appeared to be these ponds linked together by these flow systems. And of course, out in that country, it was brilliant and not that far from where we'll be, was the um, channel country, amazing country. But unfortunately, when the animals ate out the plants, the perched water management system virtually was able to reverse in 20 years or sometimes less. So what we need to do is use very professional analysis, teach people that if it's expensive, you've probably got it wrong because you've got to go back to the idea it was once automatic and cost nothing. But just the same, we're fiddling with a landscape which is now very vulnerable to storm events and to rain events. And so my process would be, I hope these people want to push our leaders and so on to give a very professional process. And when we do this, it should be done under the best guidance possible. Mm. Yes, definitely. Do you have any, so because we are talking about early on, you know, specifically in, in that kind of area, do you have any um, immediate or specific advice for them as they're listening and uh, reflecting back on what we're saying? Look, it is really, really very complex to answer that question because as the plant systems have been disrupted, the soil stability reduces and there had to be a natural system where when a land went out of production or fertility, a change had to occur because it then had to move and recycle and a natural sequence start and rebuild it. So the answer is look after where your cattle go, particularly mind all of the flow systems when it's wet and try to get a situation set up where you have got areas you can put the cattle when it's quite wet and only put them into these drainage areas when it's uh, dry enough for them not to damage it. My, it, it's a, it seems a huge uh, situation out in that country to actually grow hay and then feed the cattle somewhere else. But I think as we go forward, we've got such amazing technology to do that such things. It will be an option that we have to consider as time goes forward. Mm. And that's often what you're saying is that, you know, because Australia is so vast and has so many different uh, climatic zones, regions, um, different areas are affected by different situations. It is super crucial that we have an advisory service independent from you and any other one's opinion that's based on what our landscape can teach us. No, no question at all because, you know, when I was, I had a professional group, Clayton Oots, to analyse the probability of how this could be used and they came up with 350 registered education systems and 4,000 reasonably respected ideas. Now, it's just not possible for people to make a good judgment on all that. And the unfortunate part is a lot of people are just out there to make money out of the poor old man on the land. Mm. He's like the duck on the pond getting shot at from every direction. And we need to just reduce that to some orderly fashion where they actually have a really, well, let's say a responsible and credible advisory service that they can access. They don't have to be forced to do anything, but if the advisory service is available, then they have the option. Hmm. 
And is that part of the larger call um, for everybody involved with the Australian land management movement and agriculture and landowners and, uh, you know, that side of things, as well as for the urbanites and the rest of us? Is that like the rally call? call behind that? If I would get on my knees and crawl along, I would beg them to do that because we've got it for every other human utility like fund management, medicine. They don't always work perfectly, but at least they do work and they do keep a sort of a check and balance. And if we don't have agriculture for the one thing we must have. Mm. Yeah, food, food and water is pretty... Absolutely critical. If we don't have you keep them going, we're, we're out of business, you know. And it is quite dangerous right now because we're getting to a point where the extreme weather cycles cause people not to want to cooperate with one another and blame one another. And that, once it gets to that stage, it's pretty hard to turn it around and we're not that far away. Mm. Mm. Is there anything else that you'd like to add today as we begin to wrap up a little bit of the session? Well, look, honestly, I'm sorry we can't get there. I hope that this natural landscape produces the immune system that used to be around when I was very young. We didn't ever bother about worming or uh, immunising anything. And almost every group of animals that have come out here have gone into exponential populations. So we know it automatically did everything that we need. And that we also know that by teaching people to manage all plants, we can get it back. Beautiful. Yeah. I dare say I agree with that. Um, hopefully we will be able to get to the Northern Territory sooner rather than later. God knows we were looking so forward to coming up. It was, you know, high on the agenda of excitement. We'd just like to say a big thank you to Mike and to Madonna for you know, being with us every step of the way and staying on top of it and getting something like this organized in the middle of the COVID situation. Big shout out to you guys. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your, your two days of session and that you learn so much from the other people leading you through. Thanks guys. Thank you all.